Hey guys, welcome to Skilllink. Have you ever thought about how your message gets transferred over long distances? Today, you can easily call a person sitting miles away and share your thoughts by just dialing a number. How do you think that's been made possible? With advances in the communication network, a process called modulation helps us transfer information over these long distances with ease. Today, we'll be talking about this topic in detail. What is modulation? Why is it needed? And how is the process of modulation carried out? These are the questions that we'll be answering in our video today. So, what is modulation? You can consider the process of modulation to be analogous to sending a written letter in an envelope. The envelope makes sure that the information reaches the desired destination. Similarly, when a piece of information is sent using a telecommunication network, the signal that is to be sent is called the message signal. Other than this, another signal is added along with the message signal called the carrier signal. Here the message signal is the written letter and the carrier signal is the envelope when we compare it with our previous analogy. Now why exactly do you need a carrier signal? Well, this is done for a number of reasons. The frequency of our voice signal is between 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Let's say we transmit a signal of 20 kHz. Then, its wavelength will be 15 km. To send a message, the size of the antenna should be at least a quarter of the signal wavelength. The height of the antenna by this equation will be equal to 3.75 km, which is pretty impractical to design. This is where the carrier signal comes into play. The carrier signal has a frequency much higher than the message signal. Let's say we now transmit a signal having a higher frequency of 1 MHz. Then the antenna height is reduced 75 meters which is attainable. By the process of modulation, the carrier signal is superimposed on the message signal, keeping the size of the antenna achievable. With the sharp rise in the number of people who have access to a mobile phone at a given time, definitely more than one person will be talking using a different phone. This might lead to interference in signals. In order to avoid this, a carrier wave of specific frequency range, also called bandwidths, is given to message signal. These factors make it essential for the message signal to be modulated in order to be transmitted over long distances. Let's now discuss how the process of modulation takes place. As mentioned earlier, we have two signals. One is the message signal and the other is the carrier signal. The characteristics of carrier signals are mixed with message signals for transmission. The carrier signal contains no information whatsoever. The characteristics of the carrier signal that can be altered are its amplitude, frequency, and phase. Today, we'll be discussing two topics, amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. In amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier wave is varied. The frequency and phase of the carrier wave undergoes no changes. Given here are three graphs. The first one is the message signal or the information signal. The second graph is the carrier signal. After modulation, we obtain the third graph, which is the modulated signal. The carrier signal in the modulated graph has its amplitude corresponding to the message signal. The modulated signal has an outer imaginary line, and these lines are known as envelopes. The message signal is added to the carrier signal and then are passed through a device which amplifies the input voltage or current in the order of x raised to the power of 2. This device is called the square law device. The signal is then passed into a band pass filter which allows only the signals centered at the carrier frequency to pass. The output from the bandpass filter is power amplified and then transmitted via the antenna. The strength and quality of the transmitted signal is given by the modulation index, which is a ratio of the amplitude of message signal to the carrier signal. Next, we will talk about frequency modulation. As the name suggests, in frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the message signal. Let's compare these three graphs again. The first graph is the message signal, the second graph is the carrier signal, and the third graph is the frequency modulated signal. In the third graph, we can observe that the frequency of the modulated wave is high, where the amplitude of the is the message signal, and the frequency of the modulated signal is low, where is the message signal is low. Thus, the frequency is varied to transfer the message signal. For frequency modulated signal, there is a modulation index which is given by beta equals delta f by fm. Delta f is the frequency deviation and is given as the difference between the frequency of the carrier wave and the maximum and minimum of the modulated wave. f max is the maximum frequency of the carrier wave 
and F min is the minimum frequency of the carrier wave. Based on the modulation index, FM can be divided into narrowband and wideband FM. A narrowband FM has a modulation index of less than 1. They are used in mobile communications, for example, in police wireless radios. A wideband FM has a modulation index greater than 1 and is used in entertainment and broadcasting applications like the FM radio. Well, that's all for this video. We will see you in the next one. Until then, bye.